Okay, what we did was then develop a way to do this without having to do that big operation. The patients still go to sleep, but it's a very simple procedure. We're intubating them with a, a very small breathing tube to, to be asleep, and we then lay them on their tummy. We blow in a little air around the lung to help us see it, and this is what things look like when you're doing this. You know, this is sort of a, a cartoon drawing, but it shows a tiny little uh, scope down here and a tiny little instrument up there, and we're actually watching the whole thing on a TV screen. That's how this kind of surgery is done. So what we do is create two very small little uh, incisions, and the operation now, instead of taking seven hours, takes 10 to 15 minutes on each side. The patients wake up right after the operation, lay around the hospital for a couple of hours to feel better, and go home the same day. We remove the nerve, which in my opinion gives the absolute best results. This is what it looks like in an operating room, patients laying on their tummy, and right here we mark the tip of the scapula, okay? There's a tiny little spot where the incision is going to be, and here's the very thin little instrument that ends up being the camera that we use to do the surgery. When we're looking inside the chest, here's what you see. These are the ribs, and here's this nerve. It lays right on the surface of the chest. It's not near the spine. It's not near anything important. And I tell people it's like picking up candy off the sidewalk. So what he used to have to go through the back and spend all these hours getting to, we look right in the chest and it's laying right there. We use a very special instrument called the harmonic scalpel to take out this nerve. The harmonic scalpel vibrates at ultrasonic speed. It cuts tissues and it creates absolutely no bleeding during the operation and it generates no heat, which is very important as to causing side effects. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And what we see here is when we're done, we actually take this little piece of nerve right out of the body. Because we do it this way, we've had excellent results. We always succeed because we get what exactly we came for and we prove it by looking at it uh, on pathology specimen. We then went and studied our first 350 patients with a confirmed diagnosis of hyperhidrosis and to find out what our results were and how they were better or, and or different than what anybody else was doing. We had a group that ranged anywhere from 9 years old to 72 years old, with the average age being about 28 years old. Most, uh, it was pretty evenly matched between men and women, and one-third of the patients had a family history of hyperhidrosis in another relative. Most of our patients had tried at least one, if not more, surgical or, or non-surgical methods. The results are what I'm very, very happy with. So far, to this point, out of those 350 patients, 100% of the patients wake up from the surgery with warm, dry hands that never sweat again. That's been a fantastic result. We have 100% relief so far of axillary sweating when we add the addition of taking out the T4 nerve ganglia, 100% relief of facial sweating, and the feet actually get better 70 to 90% of the time. And People ask me, well, why would that be if you're taking out a nerve to the hand? And what we notice is that people say when their hands sweat, their feet sweat at the same time. So there's a brain-to-hand-to-foot connection, and we interrupt that connection, so most of the time the feet are better. Again, most people say, I don't care. I shake hands with my hand. I don't shake hands with my feet. If they get better, that's a bonus, and we treat it that way. There are a couple of problems that can happen with this operation. I will talk about those in a moment. But what we've found is we get about one out of five patients who will develop a mild and transient problem with some moisture over their chest or their back. That's called compensatory sweating. And it has tended to go away over the first year in all of the patients that we've studied. We've also had a 0% incidence of Horner syndrome that I'll describe for you soon. Okay, the advantages of doing what we do based on 25 years of experience of resecting the nerve is that one, we get a 100% cure of hand sweating and a 0% recurrence rate. The other methods of doing this, which involve burning, cutting, or clipping the nerve, are fairly good at treating this. They get about 95% success in treating the hand sweating, but it's not 100%. They also get about a 15 to 20% recurrence rate where the problem comes back and they have to suggest either another operation or the patient's just very unhappy. 
Axillary sweating has been very difficult to treat with any of those burning, cutting, or clipping techniques because those patients all develop severe compensatory sweating if you try to burn the nerve at two, three, and four. But with removing the nerve, we've had much better results. They used to treat, or some people still do treat, armpit sweating by removing the, the skin of the armpit, taking out the hair, doing liposuction, using Botox. All of these things are either disfiguring or painful or ineffective. But a VAT sympathectomy with removal of the T4 ganglia so far in our hands has resulted in a 100% cure rate of axillary sweating. The major problems, this would be a magic sort of thing. If we could take anybody who sweat and take out this tiny little nerve with a 10-minute operation, it would be wonderful. There are two main problems that can happen with this operation. One is called a Horner syndrome, where you essentially get a little bit of a droopy eyelid. Okay? That happens if you get damage to the stellate ganglion. That's where T1 comes into play. If my finger, you pretend, is the nerve, and my knuckle here is T2 and T3, those are the pieces that we cut out. If you hurt T1, you can get a Horner syndrome. When someone burns, cuts, or clips the nerve, they utilize heat in this area and heat can travel down or heat can travel up and you may get a Horner syndrome and the incident range is between one and five percent with those techniques of getting Horner syndrome. We've not had that again because we use the harmonic scalpel. The other problem is called severe compensatory sweating. Now this is where instead of sweating from your hands, your feet, your face, or your armpits, you sweat from your chest, your back, your legs, or other uncomfortable places. Doing it the way we do, again, as I've mentioned, we've had some mild moistness that has gone away while doing it with burning, cutting, or clipping actually in published papers has resulted in 90% of the patients getting compensatory sweating with a third to a half of those patients getting a severe dripping compensatory sweating. Other things that can happen are very, very uh, uncommon. They're just the standard things that could happen with any surgery. The complications, as I mentioned, with us doing the video resection with the harmonic scalpel, so far, Horner syndrome, we've had a 0% incidence, and significant compensatory sweating has been less than 1%. With burn cut or clip of the nerve, Horner syndrome is usually reported at 3 to 4%, with reports up to 20%, and compensatory sweating in up to 90% of the patients. So there's something different about what we're doing with taking out the nerve that ends up with a better operation with less complications and that's why I like what we do. Okay? What are the reasons for the success of this technique? One, resection of the nerve allows us to look at it under a microscope. We prove that we've got it. We never miss. That's why we've got 100% success. Cutting it out mandates that you cut all these little branches that go into the nerve. Our best impression is that these little branches control some of the compensatory sweating and that's why cutting those branches makes such a difference in people having compensatory sweating after the surgery. Using the harmonic scalpel lets us do bloodless surgery and the resected nerve provides about a one inch gap so the ends never grow back together and that's why the disease does not recur. So in conclusion, what I would say is that the microinvasive sympathectomy that we do through the tiny little holes is a very safe and very effective therapy. The microinvasive nature of the procedure results in a minimal amount of postoperative pain and the patients recover quite quickly. I tell the story of the patient who had surgery on Friday and went out and played tennis on Saturday. These are very well tolerated incisions and most people are back to work at the end of a weekend after having the surgery. The harmonic scalpel lets us do the operation safely and it doesn't generate any heat so it shouldn't cause complications. And so far in our hands, this procedure has been 100% effective for eliminating hand, face, and armpit sweating because the nerve and its branches are resected and not burned. So in conclusion, the microinvasive sympathectomy is effective treatment for hyperhidrosis with a minimal amount of pain and problems or morbidity and rapid patient recovery from surgery. I hope this has been helpful information. Thank you very much.